I am a big fan of coming up with clear goals and then saying them out loud and then being present in your body and noticing what kind of reactions come up both in your body and also in your heart. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. I have a special guest on the show this week. She is my friend. She has an innovative, brilliant mind. Ksenia Avdilova is on the show. Ksenia is the creator of Breakfast Criminals, which is actually a movement to help people, to encourage all of us to steal back our mornings, to have that morning ritual. There's so much buzz around morning rituals because how we start our day is actually one thing we can control, even if the rest of the day doesn't go well. So Ksenia has really embraced this concept and she's grown a huge platform, but that's not everything she does, of course. I love that Ksenia's roots started in more of the corporate world because it's always fascinating to hear how people navigate from there, especially entrepreneurs that head out on their own. And Ksenia has a variety of things going on. At the root, everything kind of comes back to the fact that she shows people how to bring together their inner technology, like their intuition, and outer technology, for example, social media, to get them excited to wake up and share their message. That is her brand essence. In fact, Ksenia wrote that herself while she was in the Renegade Brand Boot Camp program. And she lives this and breathes it. Through everything she does, it comes back to that brand essence. She shares why she does what she does and who she is. And that can transcend the what. She has a lot of different vehicles for how that's delivered. But at the root and core, it always comes back to that. So another initiative that Ksenia has is she has a conscious social media course that she offers. Ksenia is on a five-month journey right now with her fiancé, and they are traveling and hopping from place to place on the road. It's quite the journey. And she also made a big change recently after living in New York City for many years, actually in Brooklyn. She ended up moving to a tiny cabin in upstate New York, and she talks through what that was like in that decision-making process. In this conversation, we cover so many different topics, and one of the things that Ksenia and I align on so well is we really believe in the power of combining more of that outside data, you know, the numbers, the spreadsheet side of us, with the inside data and our internal GPS and that compass that we have access to and, and having that combo. So being able to you know, do the work and take action, but also really being focused on staying in alignment. Ksenia does that very well. She has her own podcast called Woke and Wired, which I'm grateful to have been on in the past. And you can follow her at Where is Ksenia? <laughs> and Ksenia is spelled K S E N I A. And then also Breakfast Criminals, of course. That's its own uh, specific Instagram account. 
Uh, she has a lot of different things going on, a few different accounts going, but those are the two that will get you to the others. All right, everyone, I've got an announcement. As of today, we are officially enrolling for the 2021 Renegade Accelerator Program, formerly called the Renegade Brand Bootcamp. Okay, so who is this program for? What is it? The Renegade Accelerator is for driven female leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs ready to massively increase their impact and income. The program is for like-minded, like-hearted women all over the globe. The experience is intimate, live, real-time, virtual, and it's led by me. Our curriculum is equal parts education, practical education, collaboration, and accountability. In the accelerator, you'll learn directly from me, and I share everything I've learned over the past 20 years in business. We meet in real time to learn, discuss, and grow together. This is high touch. I'll teach you a variety of things from personal branding to the business side of public speaking, podcasting, publishing, marketing partnerships, how to productize your intellectual property, and we even talk about investing. I teach you all about the different types of investing in order to build your personal wealth. You will also learn the renegade mentality, which is a key ingredient in your success to generate real results. This program is the career love of my life because I get to curate a mosaic of driven, like-minded, like-hearted women who come together to lift each other and themselves up to the next level. After the Renegade Accelerator, you become a member of my top-level alumni community. This group of unmatched women who are making a positive impact is personally curated by me. The relationship building and networking opportunities are endless, and this collective of real valuable connections will be something that you have forever. If you're at the point where you are ready to take action and accelerate, head to renegadeaccelerator.com. You can sign up for more information where I will guide you in determining if the program and the timing is right for you. If not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Why not now? Head to renegadeaccelerator.com. Ksenia, welcome to the show. I am excited to have you on today, and let's hop right in, in the spirit of why not now. Can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make, and you had to ask yourself, why not now? Amy, do I'm so excited to be on Why Not Now, and we were just talking about how it's been a year since you've been on my podcast, and I feel like we're going to bring full circle some of the things that we shared and opened up then. And as I was thinking about the why not now question that I knew you were going to ask, there's so many that I could bring into this space. But the one that is on the forefront and wants to come through is it was about a year ago and my fiance at the time, my boyfriend, Eric, and I we were living in this gorgeous Brooklyn apartment, spacious, bright kitchen, the kind of a place that you don't often find in New York City at the price point we were paying for it. It was a very comfortable life. We were running our businesses, enjoying the apartment. And then he asks me, he says, you know, our lease is up in a couple of months. What do we want to do? And just straight off the bat, from my gut was a voice that said, let's not renew our lease. And it was one of those moments in my life where I didn't know the meaning, I didn't know what was next, but I felt really strongly about following that intuitive hit to not renew the lease. And so that opened up space for just so many adventures from buying a tiny house in a forest in upstate New York to closing it down for the winter and becoming nomadic and traveling the world as digital nomads and also just creating that space because by saying no to something that was familiar and comfortable, we were inviting in the unknown 
And I didn't know exactly what would come in into that space. But I knew that for me to move into the next evolution of me as an entrepreneur, as a person, as a partner, um, it required diving into that space, even though I didn't have the answers. Amazing. I'm so glad that this was your why not now moment because it was on the top of my list to dissect and and talk through. I think it's just it's so valuable to hear from someone who's taken action on that type of urge, intuitive hit, knowing because so many times we have it and then it just kind of fades And we find ourselves three years later in the same lease, right? And you and I were just talking about this before we hopped on of how what I so appreciate about you, Ksenia, is your ability to listen to that voice and let it guide you and also put in the energy and effort behind it. It's such a balance of that doing and allowing, it seems like you have an awesome groove in that. And given you're a, a Renegade Brand Boot Camp graduate, that's the perfect type of person for this program because it, it really mirrors my philosophy. So can you share how you backed that up with the next step and what the forward motion looked like? Because you said you were inviting the unknown you didn't really know, but I know you're a person of also taking action because you, you make things happen. So how, what did it look like for the, you know, the very next step? I love that you grounded back into action because it's one thing to philosophize and talk about the beauty and magic of intuition, but I feel like if we receive those messages, but we don't act on them, then we'll lose touch with our intuition. And I actually want to bring in a story of something that happened last night that was really crazy, is how often do we take action or not take action on our intuition, and then it becomes very clear whether you know, that was the right call or not. I feel like generally in life, it's not usually that black and white. It's not like, oh, I'm going to take this. You know, I've heard stories of people like being guided uh, to not park in a certain spot and then they end up not listening to their intuition and a tree falls on the car. So sometimes it is black and white like that. For me, usually it's more this invisible trust where you don't really know what would have happened if you went against your intuition, but you just continue blindly trusting it and cultivating that connection with that guidance. But last night, I guess I needed another reminder to trust it. And we were deciding, we're in Tucson right now for the Gem and Mineral Show, and uh, we were deciding where to go out for dinner. We decided to go to this Korean place we had already been to. Everything was incredible last time, seemingly from the mind perspective, there was nothing that could have gone wrong. It was everything about it was perfect and checked all the boxes last time. And yet something in me, as soon as we get in the car, I start putting in the GPS, something within me says, no, don't go there. And I'm thinking to myself, this is silly. This makes no sense. This is such a small thing. And yet I, I say it out loud. I share it with my fiance, Eric. I'm like, listen, I don't know what it is. I don't want to go there. And his stubbornness came out as well, which we've already talked about this morning. Uh, And he said, listen, this is crazy. No, let's just go. This was so good last time. Let's go. And we go and everything that could go wrong goes wrong. The food didn't arrive. They forgot about our order. They didn't bring us the right drinks. Just all the small things in there. Eric bit his tongue and it was bleeding. Just like everything was straight out of a sitcom. And you know, this was not a big deal, whatever. We still ate our meal, we got nourished, but the experience wasn't enjoyable. It was quite stressful. And it was such a reminder for me that, yes, we can use small decisions like that to practice our intuition and to practice our connection with that, whatever you call it, divine guidance. And those choices and those opportunities to practice that are always, always, always there for us. So this morning I woke up and I was to myself, I was like, listen, no, that's it. From now on, I'm taking action on everything that feels right, even if it feels scary and it doesn't make sense. And back to your question, how it looked like when we decided not to renew the lease is we had been talking about moving somewhere that's closer to nature for a while. And Eric was spending a lot of time looking at Uh, homes and lands. And I joined him on the hunt looking at properties in upstate New York, 
And when I saw this one cabin on a beautiful plot of land perched on a rock in a little forest, there was just something about it. It told me you're meant to be here. And so even though it was a scary move and we went from a huge, gorgeous apartment to a tiny 340 square foot hunting cabin, it definitely took a lot of learning and downsizing and lots and lots of challenges along the way up to me even, you know, second guessing my decision and looking back and thinking, was my intuition wrong? Should I not have done this? But now that more and more time passes, I see how that was an important step towards us having the experience buying real estate, having the experience taking big leaps and just staying open to learning. Now that I actually think about it, that making that decision has made has given me a lot of courage in my business as well in other areas of my life. It's interesting to hear just even in this big example that you just gave with a literal life move and geographic move all the way to the decision on the restaurant, how back to your point of it seems like when we take action on the voice, we reward it and it rewards us back with more clarity and maybe even turning up the volume a little bit on that inner voice. At least in my experience, it seems like that's been the case as someone who used to have noise cancelers on when it came to my intuition. Um, it's amazing how those little shifts of listening and actually doing, like you said, the practicing, like it wasn't a big deal that your dining experience wasn't great, but it was such a great reminder of how we can practice in small ways. Um, so when those big things come up, that big intuitive hit of, hey, maybe we want to pick up stumps and actually move to a tiny cabin, you can trust that. It's like baby steps. Um, I was looking back, and and I I know that you're okay with me sharing this because we cleared it ahead of time, so I don't want any listeners to think that I'm sharing out of turn here. But I was looking at some of your goals prior to starting the boot camp program, and then this has been a year and a half ago now almost, and then where you are now. And I think you really are a, a master at manifest action. <laughs> like you've, you've been able to really dial it in. And so I just want to dig even deeper into this because you have that linear mind too. Like some of your goals were financial and they were very specific. And <laughs> you not only hit them, you added a zero to one of them. The reason I, I'm so focused on this is because I find it's pretty unique to see this blend. And our society seems to kind of romanticize both sides of the spectrum, but not the middle way. So we've got the hustle, grind, chase, grasp, 24-7 work, sleep when you die side. And then we have the just meditate and let it happen. And in my experience, neither is going to be effective or healthy. So can you talk a little bit about when you set an intention or a goal how you stay in alignment, but you also see it through. It, there's a unique process here <laughs> that you're going through. So any insight on how you don't stay so stuck on the goal that you have blinders on, but at the same time, you're focused enough to where you're getting things done. All right, let's see. I don't have a, a system that I am aware of. But I feel like once I start giving a voice, it will shape itself because this is more of a subconscious program that I work with. And I have been dissecting it more and more the more I step into a teacher role with my conscious social media program. But let's see here. I think that the first step for me to practice manifest action, I love that word that you uh, brought up. Brought up. I thought I invented it, but I didn't. I oh. thought of it, and then I looked it up, and someone wrote a book on it. I actually went to go get the domain, and so that is not my term. I just want to be full disclosure, but it is. It's a pretty cool combo. <laughs> it is. So the first step is to create the space to get quiet, so that I can get clear on what is important to me and what I want to achieve. So setting up some sort of goals, whether that's launching my online program, whether that's 
uh, signing certain amount of brand deals when it comes to breakfast criminals or creating a brand new offering or getting speaking gigs. This is a range of different things that were part of my goals as I was starting Renegade Brand Bootcamp a year ago. And that is the most important, one of the most important steps that uh, there's no way to move forward without is to actually get honest with yourself and get clear on what is important and how are you going to measure it. And Amy Jo, you brought in something very important here. I'm a big believer that it's important to get clear on those things and share them with others for accountability and for making it more real, but then also leaving space for them to shift and flow and change based on whatever your energy is, wherever you are in your life and how things have shifted because they're in constant movement. So that's the first step is getting clear to me. It's important to write those things down so that it gets real. It's in my bullet journal and I can reference them and I can build my action items based on those things. Second step is to start taking action, to come up with smaller lists of actions that will back up the big vision and the big goals. And you know, when I say that, it might sound like I'm the most organized and structured person ever, and I'm not. I'm very intuitive. But having some sort of this basic foundational structure that gives me reminders of what's important, where I'm going is absolutely vital. And I love writing everything down by hand. So I have a bullet journal that I write in every day to track my tasks and goals and priorities and how I want to feel. I also update it every beginning of every week and beginning of every month. That's how I track those goals. And then the third piece of the equation that is part of absolutely everything I talk about, I practice, I share with others, I teach on my podcast is the alignment piece is, okay, we know what we want. Now, am I actually ready to receive it on an energetic level? Am I aligned with what I'm calling in? And if not, what is in my way of truly believing that I can achieve this? So it looks different for everyone. I I call it alignment. And for me, it takes shape of daily rituals, whether that's morning meditation, sitting down with a cup of cacao in a circle with community, doing sound baths, doing yoga, going on walks in nature and just getting quiet or just taking a couple deeper breaths in the morning and at night. And I don't think there's a structure and a system that works for everyone, but this is just a a range of things. Yours might be just spending some time with a pet or sitting in a hot tub under the stars. I'm thinking about you, Amy Jo. Whenever I see you in your hot tub, I'm just imagining you sitting under the stars and plotting your next big move. (laughs) Um, But I would say those are the most important steps. So get clear on what the goals are, and that's the system that I follow. Then break them into action items, and then work on your alignment so that your inner world is aligned with the goals that you're creating for yourself in the outer world. Oh, the clarity is so important. And and what you said about kind of being able to speak it outwardly. So getting clear inside and then being able to put it into the world. That energetic exchange is so important because if we aren't clear, we're not going to be able to receive because we won't attract what we need to attract in my experience. And this might sound a little woo, but I actually have this has happened over and over so many times. And I was I was thinking about this. So I have a guilty pleasure of watching The Bachelor. <laughs> and uh, and also I was flipping between that and the Iowa caucus last night. So there's a little balance there. But The Bachelor was in this situation and this woman was wishy-washy. She wasn't clear. And it made me think, well, first of all, he he wasn't buying it. It was like do or die. Like you, you're – you're probably going to be out even though she's a great candidate and I hope she wins. No names here. But I was thinking about this woman that I invested in a few years ago, several years ago, who I knew pretty well and I believed in her, but she could not get clear about her business model and it was changing every day and it became so wishy-washy that I was unable to help her at some point, right? And so when we 
aren't clear on the inside what's about to happen and the results that could be teed up for us. They just, they don't even have a chance. And I I was reading back to your brand essence, Ksenia, and if you're cool with me sharing, I'd love to read this and then you can talk through what's changed or what hasn't. But sure. back to your conscious social media course and having, you know, that was one of your goals, which now you've not only launched, but you're well on your way and multiple programs down the road and revenue generating yet super alignment. So your one sentence for your brand essence after we went through the process and the program, you said, I show people how to bring together their inner technology, and then you have in parentheses intuition, and outer technology, parentheses social media, to get them excited to wake up and share their message. And as I was reading that and thinking back, I, you 100% have lived that inside and outside, and it has paid dividends to have that clarity. And maybe it's shifted a little bit, but what would you say as far as that that brand essence today? Is it pretty aligned with where you are right now and this the process? Hmm. Well, first of all, whoever wrote this did a great job. I don't remember writing this down. It sounds great. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I'll take it on. Um, I, I, li- I love it a lot. It's still very much aligned because I remember at the time I was looking at, okay, I have all of these different projects that I do. I run a wellness blog that is based in morning rituals and self-love and nourishment and recipes, breakfast criminals. I have a podcast about conscious entrepreneurship and spirituality, Woke and Wired. I'm a speaker. I'm a teacher. I have a crystal account with my fiance on the side. And it's so many things. Whenever I meet someone and they ask me what I do, I would get so confused. So I remember clearly I was looking for a way to merge them all together. And I was looking for that common thread that is part of it all. And ultimately, the reason why all of this still feels very aligned and true is because the common thread, even if my businesses change, if uh, my offerings change, the common thread is still the connection with self through ritual and connection with the rest of the world through ritual, whether that looks like mindfulness practices, whether that looks like spiritual practices, or maybe just movement. And yeah, it's still very much uh, true. And it's interesting to see how now that you say it out loud, I'm thinking, okay, I want to I wanna come back to some of these things because it's one thing to have it tucked away somewhere on paper, but it's another thing to use it and say it out loud. And something that I also learned from the boot camp is it's one thing to come up with a clear vision for your brand and your offering and your plans for your life on paper and write them down in your journal, maybe even your Instagram. But it's a whole other thing to say it out loud. And I've been noticing that for me, it's a, a really cool tool that can serve as a test whether, okay, when I say out loud that I'm someone who helps people reconnect with their intuition and then use social media to share their message, how does that feel? Do I feel like I want to spread my shoulders wide and and do I feel grounded when I stand up tall or does it shrink me? And to me, that's a really good thermometer whether you know that's something that I should explore further and feel aligned with or something that I'm either just not ready for or is not my thing. Like when I say I introduce myself, for example, as a food blogger or a meditation teacher or a yoga teacher, which all of these things I've done for many years and have credentials for, you know, if there is such a credential for food blogging, I don't know. But, you know, technically. I think at this point you've been at it for a very long right. time. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of labels or, or credentials anyway, but. I do have credentials for a lot of these things, but it just doesn't feel right. If I come into a room and I introduce myself as a food blogger, it feels like it just covers a tiny piece of me. So I am a big fan of coming up with clear goals and then saying them out loud and then being present in your body and noticing what kind of reactions come up both in your body and also in your heart. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. If you are digging this podcast, 
please do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It just takes a moment and it means a ton to us. Also, after recording more than 100 episodes, I've created a bit of a cheat sheet on the top five things I've learned from renegades and how they get from idea to action, from dreaming to doing. I will email you the downloadable PDF when you subscribe to my newsletter. Just head to amyjoemartin.com and click on connect with me. You're so good at transcending the what and getting to that why and the who, which will allow you to reach and resonate with a much broader audience anyway and make a much more impactful connection versus the literal, the, you know, the what. It's a vehicle. The what is a vehicle. And so let's talk a little bit about, you know, you've you've been in this game of blogging, social media, uh, digital communication for for a very long time, and you've been extremely successful in building platforms, um, many different types of platforms as well as your own. What are some of the things that you feel has allowed you to maintain a healthy relationship with social communication, you know, with these new ways of, of communicating in these channels over the years because it's changed so much? Mm, such a good question. Well, the first one, and yes, I have been blogging pretty consistently since probably 2005. So back when I was in college, that was a huge creative outlet for me. And 15 years. Like, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're OG. <laughs> yeah. It, it really went in the outside world in my daily life. I often didn't feel like I fit in or that what I'm interested in is valid, or that I really connected deeply with other human beings. In the world of social media, it just felt so limitless. And I just was so tapped into the possibility of connecting with others based on the things that really made me feel alive. At the time, it was photography, it was fashion, it was books, it was philosophy. And it allowed me to connect with other humans with similar interests. And it really gave me a sense of belonging that I didn't feel in real life through those teenage years. And so I always had love for storytelling and connecting with others. And I think that's what really the passion that carries me through as I start different platforms and experiment more. And I just want to say right away that as I'm teaching my principles and conscious social media more to people, I always want to remind everyone that not everyone is wired to be a natural storyteller. You know, when I walk into the room, uh, I immediately see what could be content. I I just don't even think about it as Mm -hmm. content. I just am. It's so natural to me to document and share with others what I'm going through. And not everyone is that way. And Mm -hmm. maybe you're not meant to be that way. And I really don't think that everyone is meant to love storytelling I think there are ways to make anyone feel more ease around it and feel more conscious in our relationship with technology but not everyone is meant to be an influencer or a blogger and that's okay that brings me to the point that I know we both uh, align on is that social media does not have energy of its own so when we come on social media and then we just start comparing or judging And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all human and we all do that consciously or subconsciously. We got to remember that social media is a mirror and it's there to show us things within us that are ready to be looked at and maybe released or maybe addressed in another way. And when we see social media as an opportunity to get to know our own subconscious and what we truly deeply want in our lives that's when we really set ourselves on a path of just a whole new relationship, not just with social media, but also ourselves, our business, our lives. And to give an example of that is you see, let's say, a fashion blogger or a travel blogger on Instagram, and you feel this thing come up in your gut, like, ah, oh, you know, I wish I could have that, or why she, you know, what, what, why is she different, or what am I doing wrong with my life? Why don't I have that? You know, there's many different options of that story and how it could go. 
But instead of seeing it as this opportunity to judge yourself and make yourself smaller, what if you just go a little deeper and say, okay, there's something triggering about looking at this person's feed. What is it? And, and what does it tell me about what I want to create in my own life? And when we see it this way, I can't tell you how many times I have been able to manifest something, bring something into my life because I saw that someone else did it on social media. Subconsciously, it gives me this pass. It tells me, okay, someone else did it, so I can too. And we all can do that. And what it takes from us is to stop being uh, a lazy, unengaged observer and judger and start consciously curating what we allow into our subconscious by curating who we follow and what we let into our feeds. And that's something that I practice all the time. Just in the past weekend, I've unfollowed like 500 accounts across my different platforms because I just realized, why am I holding on to something that is a what if? And why am I holding on to something that I think I should be connected to when in reality it doesn't make my heart feel alive? So I'm just going to clear the space and let go. And that's a consistent practice. And that's one of the first things I do whenever I work with people in my conscious social media program. We clean up our feeds and we get clear on what we allow into our subconscious. And that just creates a much more aligned and elevating experience whenever we do engage with social media. And that leads me to the point that also goes with everything else I just shared is healthy boundaries with social media is something that's extremely important. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at that. Sometimes I might still lay uh, in bed with, uh, with my phone. But in general, I try not to look at any of my notifications and social media feeds until I'm done with my morning routine. And I try not to bring my phone into the bedroom. Once I'm done with my evening rituals, I drink my apple cider vinegar with lemon and honey. I get sleepy and I get in bed and there's no phones because those last waking moments is, and the first waking moments, according to lots of neuroscientists, is a, a time when our subconscious is the most perceptive. So I want to make sure that I allow it to either be completely clear and connected to my own intuition or read something that expands what I think is possible for myself. And those kinds of boundaries are going to look completely different for everyone. Maybe it's spending 20 minutes scrolling on your feed in the morning instead of one hour, or maybe it's just being a little more conscious and taking deeper breaths while you do that. It's going to look completely different different for everyone but it's important to keep asking ourselves how can we all be more conscious and mindful in how we engage with social media because when we do that the things that we're able to create the kind of connections and business opportunities are absolutely mind-blowing and I've seen it in my experience as an immigrant who came to the U.S. without any connections without any funds and built my life using just sharing what mattered to me on social media. Mm. Oh, this is so good. And you know what I'm thinking? Because Sonia's like, right. oh, man, I wish every teen in the world could go through your class because it's so powerful and it's making such an impression on our youth that um, if a healthy foundation can be established during those ages of so gosh, I mean, young girls are joining social at 10, 11 on Instagram. It's it's crazy. And we think mm -hmm. about as adults how impressionable we can be and how it's a mirror and just amplifies what already exists. And it can be um, – it's just such a powerful tool. Um, anyway, so that, that just popped into mind. It's like, wow, that would be amazing. Um, it would be. To get this into the hands of teens more. Maybe we can, we'll sideline that and talk about that uh, later. So much of what I'm hearing from you is it seems like there's, there's such self-awareness, such power in escalating our self-awareness through social, and that leads to self-actualization, according to Bruce Lee, which it is. You're, you're exactly right. It's, um, you know, the space doesn't have energy. We bring the energy to it and decide what it is and what it isn't. It's interesting how 
humans get to decide it's not like these evil tools per se, uh, which I think sometimes that can be the wrap. So when you are in a place where you have an idea, let's say, so you have so many different types of things going on, yet they're all kind of wrapped up into that umbrella statement that that we just talked about. How do you decide what's going to get your energy and what isn't in a single day? Because you have so many different things going on. Plus, you're traveling right now, by the way. I really would love to touch on that and how you've been on the road for, what is it, four months now? Yeah. And so I guess as I'm talking this through, it's really a time management question, but also a how do you decide what to focus on? You know, focus is so important. And it seems like you have a lot of different things, but that's okay. You're able to have this portfolio of different things. Mm. Well, first of all, I think it's important to be honest with the audience. And there's just so many myths around social media. And you, one of them is if you have a certain amount of followers, you probably make a certain amount of money. It's just so far from the truth. There's accounts that have a million followers that don't monetize. There's micro influencers have 5,000 followers and might be making six figures. Just anything is possible. And whatever you see out there and the different expressions of my brand, it doesn't mean that each one of them is making money at a given time. It's important to get clear on that. And it's important to, for me also to know that, okay, this month I've signed X amount of brand deals with Breakfast Criminals. So I don't really have to have pressure, let's say on the Conscious Social Media Program or in the Crystal Criminals. It's that balance between all the things I do. And the reason why I love having multiple projects and multiple income streams is so that there is not that pressure. And so each one of them can keep a certain level of innocence and this just passion for what I do. Uh, because otherwise, it's too easy when we choose to do one thing, we put all the pressure on it, we quit our full time job. And then we're expecting to make money from our passion right away. First of all, it's not meant for everyone. It's meant to be a side hustle. Sometimes that's just the answer. And second, it never hurts to have those multiple projects so that you feel more ease and you feel more spacious and you have more choice about what to give your energy to. And in terms of how I choose what to give energy to, it's just so intuitive. Some days I wake up and I just have this hit, okay, I got to film this IGTV or this TikTok and I'm going to post it on Breakfast Criminals and that's what's I, you know, I'm picking up on the energy that's in the field that I'm t tapping into and I just know what energy is the most active and I give my actions to that. And in terms of one thing from a more strategic perspective is that all of the accounts that I manage and run, I see them as the same planets in the same universe so they're not completely different things but they can actually all support each other so let's say on breakfast criminals I might be posting a new recipe on my personal account which has been changing name quite often but right now it's where is Xenia to reflect my nomadic adventures mm -hmm. uh, on there I might post the behind the scenes of how I'm doing the shoot that I'm doing for a brand and then on Crystal Criminals, I will post a video of what crystal is in my pocket while I'm doing all of that. So I see it as an opportunity to tell the same story from different perspectives based on what the values of each brand are. And I don't want to overwhelm anyone because not everyone has to or is meant to have so many social media accounts. I think it takes a certain type of passion and skill. But that said, I've seen that Whenever people within my program, people I work with, create a separate account for their business or for their offering, there's just like a new kind of energy and space that opens up and they feel a lot more freedom in experimenting and testing things out than uh, compared to just putting it all in your personal account where you have every aunt and uncle and high school friends following you and there's a certain story you have associated with who you are and what you're capable of. So both from like um, psychological and an energetic perspective, there's something magical in creating a whole new account based on a niche idea of something that you're really into 
and just seeing where that energy takes you. It's cool. It seems like such an art and science too. You know, it's that's that's what I love about kind of watching you from afar. If there was some advice that you would give to people who are looking to make a shift and they really want to use social to help them share, you know, their message and provide some momentum in that direction. Uh, and when I say shift, I mean probably more of a career shift. What one piece of advice would you give them? Wow. The program that I teach is eight weeks. <laughs> There's journaling prompts and meditations and visualizations and coaching calls. So let me see. Can I distill that into one piece of advice? Um, Just take the class. <laughs> I think right. that's probably the, <laughs> take the class. No, but there is something. I would say um, just get, I really loved that you equated what I was sharing, Amy Jo, with what Bruce Lee says. And I think that's really the key. The more self-awareness we build around ourselves and how we use social media, how we show up, and the more honest we get with ourselves about what we're holding back what limiting beliefs we're holding on, what stories we tell ourselves day after day and remind ourselves that we can take charge of all of that. And social media can become like this magical portal that each time you open it up and each time you share, you impact one more person. You feel more inspired. You get new ideas. That's how it feels for me, but it didn't happen for uh, by mistake. It happened because of cultivating that awareness and that conscious approach to social media every day. And I truly believe that anyone can do that. And it just takes creating new habits, surrounding yourself with a like-minded community of people who have similar values. You know, seeing people interact within my programs is one of my favorite things. And I, I'm sure you can resonate because there's just so magic that I was able to create with other people who have taken your program. So that's really it is just start getting honest with yourself and start getting aligned with who you are and getting honest with what you really want to do. And then remember that once you find the practices that make you feel more aligned with your truth and what you want to create in your life, then social media is a tool that is there for you to put those things into action and make those things a reality. But one piece doesn't really work without the other. And social media on its own has no energy. So it's up to you what you bring to the table. So why not choose to bring something conscious and expansive and inspiring? It has been such an honor to witness and and help guide to a certain extent along the way your journey. Um, it, it really is, you know, I appreciate you so much, Ksenia, too, for sharing and being honest and real. And we will definitely be following along your journey as well as your geographic journey as you discover the map and explore. Um, and thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom and energy. Mm, thank you so much, Amy Joan. Something that you actually shared on my podcast that I really love that I want to end with is a quote by you on my podcast, Woken Wired. You said, it doesn't have to be strategy or intuition. They work together. And I think that's really summarizes everything we've been talking about. It is about finding that connection with our intuition and alignment, but then also knowing that you can have smart strategy to support all of that and just amplify what you're capable of. Thank you for holding that space for expansion for me, for everyone who's listening. And I hope that you all uh, see new possibilities for yourselves and how you relate to who you are and social media. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. 
A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? We'll be right back.